Welcome to Paranormal Roundtable, PRT for short. My name is Josh Turner. I'm your host. They call me Wolf. My email address is doswolfman88 at gmail.com. And I'm here with my co-host, Tony. They call me Mushu. I call me Mushu, I guess. Yeah, he calls himself that. And I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to you know, still rep it. Yeah, it's not going to die, all right? Forever. Yeah, I get it. Sure. I'm not going to let it. So anyways, uh, yeah, Kid Mushu over here. So he's this Pokemon guy over here. He's he's into that. So I think because it's just an easy running joke that we can have, you know? Oh, it's a joke? I was, I was being serious. I don't know. It's, it's a joke. But it, <laughs> anyways... Doswolfman88 at gmail.com. Send us your crazy stories, folks. Also, uh, PRTpodcast.com. PRTpodcast.com. It's our website. Please check it out. We have our uh, all of our episodes. We, mean, uh, we have an art area. We have our little link to our merch store. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, just it's, it's pretty neat up there. You know, just check it out for us if you want. You We're on a lot of different platforms. There. Yep. Then, um, YouTube is, is the most popular. If you're listening to us from another platform, please go to YouTube and like and subscribe because that helps us out. Like the shows and please subscribe and comment. You know, just and so, comment. So, you know, we, and also, um, if you need a quick link to either our PayPal or you know our website or our merch store, you can find it all in the description of the YouTube link. We have them in almost every description, besides some of the re- more uh, the first ones that we did where we didn't put it on there yet. People have been asking about the the groups, the Facebook groups. Yes, and so I would like to give them a rundown of the Facebook groups uh, once again. Paranormal Roundtable, obviously, is a group. We also have a Paranormal Roundtable page on Facebook. Please go and like that page. It's a separate group. You know, it's a it's separate, separate from the group, yes, and the, the page. And so we are – I am the admin of two other groups that are not my groups in particular. The, the one of them belongs to Lori, Sh- Lori Shivers. That's Cryptids and Paranormal Reality. The other one is Michael Moran's group, Cryptid, Cryptid Squad, and my wife runs Paranormal Lounge, and Tony runs Paranormal Encounters, mm-hmm. and I run Paranormal Roundtable with them. And so, that being said, there are some really good dogman groups that we're a part of, too, and some pretty uh, pretty cool ghost groups. And I would say at the top of the list for dogman would probably be dogman and werewolf discussion. That's a good one. And... uh True Horror Stories of Texas, that's a good one. Uh, there's so many of them. I'm in a lot of different groups. And so I might send you friend re- or might send you requests to join groups with me if you are my friend on Facebook. Now, if you send me a friend request on Facebook and you don't specify that you're a listener of Paranormal Roundtable, I may not accept your friend request. So to facilitate you being a friend with me on Facebook, please send me a, a message on Messenger saying I am a listener. Uh, yeah, we are, you can't just, you know, accept everybody. It gets a little too Yeah, you too. can't. There's two way. There's no way. I can't just accept everyone's friend request because I want to make room for you, the listeners, to, to interact with us and be on our Facebook with us. Tony, you can look him up under Tony Long. L-O-N-G. Yep. And you can, you can send us friend requests and uh, you can find us like that on Facebook and we can communicate with you through Messenger. So anyways, you got the email. You got the links, the, you know, the whatever you got. You got everything. I want to send a shout out, a shout out to Brandon and Mandy Ransom. <clears throat> Brandon has been a supporter of the show. His wife Mandy is battling uh, cancer, and I would like to send a shout out to that everyone. Please pray. Uh, send her your prayers and your thoughts and and your your good energy. Please help her out um, so she can defeat it and get through it. Brandon has donated money to the to the show i appreciate it brandon thank yeah, you very so much and, I mean, and we're thankful for, to everyone who donates everyone who donates <clears throat> you know brandon especially and i told it, brandon that we would send a shout out because of everything he's dealing with he's been know? yeah he's dealing with a lot and and i appreciate your loyalty to the show and listening to us and helping to support it now that being said if you want to support the show buying a t-shirt or a mug or a uh a hoodie case. or a phone case is a good way to support the show too. We are doing a giveaway today and we're going to be doing one every show for a while. We're giving away one of Linda Godfrey's autographed books to a listener. Now, if you want to be a part of that, what you need to do is when we put the link on the Paranormal Roundtable group, we're going to put a link to the show. You need to go to that link on the Paranormal Roundtable group. Join first if you're not a part of the, 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 of the join up on the group. Go to the group. And post 
a comment about the show, whether you li- that you listen to it. And so we will pick a person at random and we will have a, a, um, what is it? Nonpartisan person, third, third party, third party, nonpartisan person to pick someone at random for us. And, uh, it's Banjo, basically. We're going to have yes. a big, we're going to have our dog big list and we're just going to throw him on one and whatever name he lands on is, whatever is the one winner. he pees on. That's the one. Oh, yeah, there we go. That's, that's you. You're the lucky one. <laughs> so you will win one of Linda Godfrey's autograph books. So and we're gonna keep doing that, folks. We're gonna have Lon Strickler, Linda Godfrey, Ken Gerhard, uh, Lyle Blackburn, Lyle Blackburn, and David Weatherly, Nick Redfern, a bunch of different people who are participating in this giveaway. So I want you to you the listeners to get something um, for listening to the show. Yep. It's my way of saying thank you for the one year anniversary. And so for a while until the supplies run out, we're gonna be giving away uh, merchandise. We gave away six books and six T-shirts on the one-year anniversary, which, by the way, was just something that we decided to do the night before. Well, it was random. And then the next day, we did it, and it was just, like, random. And yeah, I me called and Anthony up. had no idea we were going to, you know, record. Yeah, we were going to record until the last minute. I had called Ken and Lyle and, and Vic and literally that afternoon and said, hey, I'm going to do a, an anniversary show. Can you guys come on? And they did. And DDoS was there, and we, we did it up. It was good. Yeah, well, what a great cast to have too like you know a lot, oh, it of, was a lot awesome. of them have been with us since the beginning you know mm-hmm. ddos and um vic obviously have been there trying to you know help you out ken's been a good friend ken you know is just Lyle's supportive. awesome he's got a great great band by the way ghoul town mm-hmm. i've been i've been jamming that dude yeah, guys got like songs. a bunch of albums and me and my wife have been ch- the alvira song awesome mm-hmm. really good yeah guy, guy is awesome so La Blackburn's another one. He's a good guy. We talented gave away some man. of his books. Very crazy. talented. Crazy. We gave away him some of his, his books, him and Ken's books on the uh, the one year anniversary. Yeah, very talented guys. Uh, Ken, always on TV. Uh, I'll tell you what, man, constantly. And so Vic, awesome, awesome guy. Got a great show. I was on his 300th episode, Dog Man. Go check that out. People have asked me about the Dog Man episodes you can find those on our playlist and they'll take you right to dogman encounters and you can listen to all of my shows that i've been on yep, on our youtube yeah, playlist on the youtube playlist i need to update it and put the 300th episode on there now too but uh i think that that show got twenty five thousand views in the first day yeah, it was crazy it was crazy how many people were like the views it got so people just go and check it out i saved a lot of really good encounters to go on his show and do the 300th episode so Show show Vic and his show some love and go check it out and check out my work on there. Not just me, but he's got a lot of uh, great encounters that people have come on and told their stories. So that being said, getting all that out of the way, we're going to talk today about something that just, you know, keeps coming up over and over again. Uh, some we just, we, we mentioned it a little bit in the past and we were still trying to, you know, finish it, but now we finally are able to get into it. Mm-hmm. Some uh, immortal stories. Oh, I thought... Are you talking about junk bonds? I thought you were talking about junk bonds too. Oh I thought gosh. we were just going to do immortals real quick. Uh, <laughs> well, let's do junk bones. Uh, okay. <laughs> no. So no, seriously, folks, as we're going to talk about immortals. Now, here, here's here's a subject. I, you know, it's baffling to me. Uh, some people think that immortals are some sort of vampires. Some people think they're reptilians that they live a long time. Some things. Some people think they're demons. Some people say they're angels. Others say that there's some sort of zombie that doesn't have a heartbeat. I don't know. Or just an un- unlucky soul who's just forced to live forever. Forced to live I mean, forever. Or maybe it was somebody that was playing with alchemy. I mean, who knows? I mean, the gentleman I, I'm going to speak about, you know, later on, he, he's a very prof- uh, proficient alchemy. He, he, Count St. Germain. Yep, Count St. Germain. He, he he did a lot of alchemy. He was very... Yeah, he believed... They, a lot of people believe that Saint, Count St. Germain achieved immortality through his alchemy. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. We're, we're going to talk about it. Okay, so that being said, I ha- I'll i start off with a story. I don't know that this was a, an immortal person, per se, 100%. First, I, I want to say, this, the reason it took me so long to get this show together and get it out was because I was waiting on a story from a woman that, that had a story, and I thought it was uh, prudent to wait and have her give me the, the rest of the story as Paul Harvey would say, and yeah, lay it all out there because I could have gone with most of what she had given me, but I wanted to get the rest of it. And and whenever she had a chance, we could finish communicating. And so I finally got it and uh, I want to tell the whole thing in its entirety. So that being said, I just need to um, 
start off. I'm going to start off by by telling a story that that happened to us when we were working at the club. There was a guy named Adam. I'm just going to jump right in, who used to work for me. And here's the funny thing: all the the people that I've ever worked with that I can remember that were named Adam were actually all pretty cool guys. This guy was no exception. He was actually very friendly, very outgoing, very intelligent, well read, well versed gentleman. Uh, that worked for us. He worked for us for about, I think, four or five months. I've gone back and talked to a lot of the guys that worked with us back then, and they all seem to have the same rem- a memory of him, that he was a very, very pleasant guy to be around, was very knowledgeable, very approachable, did his job. Uh, I believe um, from what he told us that he was originally from Georgia. Um, I, I remember him saying that he was from Georgia. I hired him Back in, I believe, 1999 or 98. I believe it was 99. Here's the thing. Here's the weird thing about it. And and, and later that year, like I hired him, I think, in the middle of 99. But later in the year, a few months went by, and he was it was almost around the time he quit, we hired another guy named Serge. Now, Serge knew Adam. And this is where it gets weird. It gets weird almost immediately right here on the story, folks. Serge told me, he's like, I know this guy, okay? Serge was in his 40s already. so He was by far the oldest bouncer we had, but he was still a big, strong, tough guy, and he worked our back door, which was actually right next to the front door. We called it the back door. It wasn't the real back door. We had another back door that we used to take out the trash, things like that. This back door was just used for people to go in and out. They'd get a stamp, and you could go back into the club. Or if you got thrown out, that's where you went, flying out that back door, which was right next, like I said, a few feet from the front door. But that's what Serge did. Serge was was about six foot six. He was a humongous guy. He could have been a wrestler. He was such a big dude. And he had been working downtown off and on for a while. Now, he had done a stint in jail. He was a motorcycle uh, enthusiast, if that's what you want to call it, and uh, a member of a group of people who like motorcycles a lot. And he had worked in a bar uh, with Adam. And he claimed that Adam was also a motorcycle enthusiast with him uh, years before. Let me describe to you this guy, Adam. Adam was blonde hair, blue eyed. His hair was kind of thinning on the top. And he looked like he was not quite 30 years old. I would say late 20s, maybe 27, 28. Young looking guy. Very young looking guy. The age that he gave me was 26. Okay. I would say, you you can say, yeah, you're 26. I, w- I would believe it, but maybe somewhere between that and 30. You know what I mean? I believe that he said he was like 26 or 27, but I don't know for sure how old he was because after Sergio told me what he knew of the guy, it really made me doubt everything. He told me that he had worked with this guy at another bar 20 years ago. Now, Sergio, I believe, was like 44 years old when he started working for us. And so he was in his mid-20s when he worked with this guy. And he said literally he had worked with that guy in 1979 or, or, yeah, 78, 79, something like that, or 78 and 79, Uh, something to that effect. Those two, those two years came up, and I'm thinking, how is that even possible? That guy would have been a little toddler when, when he was, you know, and they knew each other. Like, Adam did not deny that he knew this guy, but he kept telling Sergio, no, I didn't work with you when you say I did. He goes, that's not me. And he goes, well, your name is Adam. And he goes, yeah, my name is Adam, and you look just like the guy I knew. And Sergio told him that, and Adam they literally had an argument in front of me and a couple of the other guys. I think Chief was there and Willie, a few other people, my brother. And it was very it was very bizarre. A lot of weird things happened downtown when you worked down there for a decade. So a lot of weird things happened. But this was very odd. Did not quite understand <laughs> that, like who was right and who was wrong. Okay. Uh, obviously, Sergio had to be wrong because Adam was, in, you know, in his claimed he was 26. Yeah. I thought he was closer to 30, maybe. Maybe he was lying about his age. Sometimes people get weird when they start to get to 30 or 40. They start to say that they're younger than they are. So I thought maybe this guy was just trying to pick up on chicks. So he's like, I'm not 30. I'm, you know, I'm 26. But, you know, the guy couldn't have been older than 29, 30. I mean, there's no way. Definitely not 40. No way. No way. 
So if Sergio worked with him 20 years before, that would make the guy 40-something, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. This guy, Sergio's like, this is him. This is the same guy. Here's what he did to prove it to us. He said, I have a picture of us at this other club, at this other bar. Now, he went back home down to South Texas, and I think it was like in at Christmas time or something, and Adam had already left. He left about a week after Sergio got there, which I thought was odd, too. He comes back with this photos, and one of the photos was a picture of the staff, the bouncers and the bartenders standing together, and this guy, Adam, was in the photo. It was him. Like, I, I am positive it was him, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not kidding. Look the same. There, yeah, absolutely. The there were probably like six or seven different bouncers. Tony, you probably know every one of them that vouched for this. I believe his stepdad was around at that time too. I mean, I know he was around, but I'm pretty sure he saw the picture. It, it was a very, it was a very uh, well known story amongst me and my guys, and it was just, it was just a weird thing. And so we just kind of chalked it up to, you know, it was just weird, and we just kind of let it go, and that was the end of it. We didn't really talk about it anymore. It kind of just, you know, it was, it was a weird thing and it was just a kind of a story that faded away. It didn't come up again until about, I'd say, three, four years ago, maybe four or five years ago. One of my friends who wor works downtown, bounces, bounces for a long, long time, and I'm not going to say his name because he's still working down there. And, and I think Tony and Anthony both know who he is. Uh, pretty big uh, guy, run, works at a bar down there. He was in Las Vegas. And he told me, he goes, you're never going to believe this. Now, he didn't work with us back in the day, but he worked at a club that was right down the street from us, and he knew Adam. He was always around. He was always around, yeah. And Adam had, had a lot of talents. Adam could do tattoos. He had a some sort of like like studio that he had set up where they recorded music and did all these other things. And then one day he just left. His girlfriend came to the club asking for him. I told her he had left. He had never picked up his last paycheck. He was just gone. He just disappeared. He pulled up stakes and he was gone. Never heard about him again until a few years later. Now, a few years from, from now, I think it was back in 2015 or maybe 2016, I ran into a friend of mine downtown off of 6th Street, and he's a bouncer, and he told me, he goes, you're not going to believe this, but I ran into Adam. Okay. Now, do the math from 1998 or 99, whichever year it was, until 2016, okay? Mm -hmm. That's like, what, 18 years? About, uh, right? Around there. Okay. He said that he saw Adam working in Las Vegas, that he was working at a, at a kiosk at Caesar's Palace, like a little store or something, and in the mall area. And he, he, saw, he saw him at the casino at Caesar's Palace, I believe is what he said, and then later on, he saw him working at a, at a kiosk at a mall, and he knew it was the same guy because he yelled his name, and he turned, and he looked at him, and then he kept going like he didn't recognize him, but then later he ran into him at the mall. So I asked him about this, and I'd had a few drinks when he was telling me this story, and it really shocked me because everything kind of came flooding back into my brain about how Serge was so uh, committed to, to, adamant. to adamant that his story, that that was him, that that was the same guy. Uh -huh. Now, when he approached him in the mall, my friend, I'll call him T, because that's the first letter of his nickname, he went up to this guy, and he asked, T, T asked him, he says, is your name Adam? And he told him no. He says, well, I saw you in the casino, and when I said Adam, you turned around and you looked at me. And he's like, well, yeah, I heard somebody yelling, and he, and he goes, so, so that was you in the casino. He said, yeah, yeah, I, I, I recognized, you know, that somebody was yelling at me, but and he says, but your name's not Adam. And he goes, well, no, it's not Adam. And he goes, but we, we locked eyes. You know, he goes, and I saw you from across the casino. And he goes, and, and you look like a friend of mine named Adam. He goes, well, my name's not Adam. And so what's your, what is your name? Like he said, my name is Jeff. And he goes, okay, what's your last name? And he gave him some name, like if I remember correctly, Jeff Waters or some, some you know, name that was just sounds like something he just made up off the cusp of, you know. And he says, well, you look really familiar. And, and of course, by this point, you know, T had aged and he's about my age and you can tell he's, you know, this guy, Adam looked exactly the same. He goes, dude, I swear. He goes, if I didn't know any better. And we were at my friend Arash's club that in the night that, you know, and he told me, he said, if I didn't know any better, he goes, I would say that it's the same guy. And I'm sorry. I said, uh, my friend squids club. 
we were standing there talking, and he told me at, at Squid's club that he that he, that he works at. You know, I think he told Squid too. We were all standing there, and he says, "If I didn't know anybody, it was the same guy." And he told the story, and it was very shocking to me. Same age and everything. Same, and he said he has not aged a day. Now, do the math, okay? If if he is the same guy from 1978. To, to 1998 yeah. to 2016, or I think it was actually 2000, maybe 2000, anywhere between 15 and 17 when he told me this story. I can't remember. The years all run together, especially when you're drinking. But when he told me this story, it, it, you're looking at like 40 years. I mean, he would be in the 60s. If this is the same guy, and he looks like he hasn't aged a day. So that is my brush or story, I should say, with immortals. That is my brush with the immortals. And I gave you the story. I mean, you know, it, it was it's a weird story. I don't know what to make of it. I've always wondered about it. I've thought back on it many times. Like, what could this be? Who was this guy? Like I said, he was very friendly. He spoke several languages, which wasn't unusual. He didn't speak them all fluently. He wasn't like a a master linguist or anything like that. But he did he did know a lot of languages. He very, knew a, very smart. Very smart guy. He knew about cars. He knew how to work on cars, which that in and of itself is not strange. But he also had worked as an electrician. He was a master plumber. And I was thinking, how does this guy who's supposedly in his mid-20s, I would say 30 at the most, how would he accomplish so much in his life? And why did he leave and never pick up his paycheck? And when T tried to talk to him at the store that he was working at, and I can't even remember what it was that he was selling. It was some kiosk, he said, in a mall. And it was some, like, just rinky-dink job, whatever. But why... Did he like just just pretend like to not know my friend when well, he was positive that that was him? Probably because he's an immortal or well, some kind of being that could live sixty years and still retain the same form or whatever. Here's the good thing: he took pictures of the guy, not right up you know up next to him because it would have been weird because the guy's denying who he said he was. He took two or three photos of it and he showed me on his camera. Now the night that he showed me, I had been drinking. And, and I remember, but I remember looking at the photos and I remember thinking, that's him. That's the same guy. It's got to be. The thing that also gives it away is he had a tattoo on his arm. He had a tattoo, like a Japanese tattoo, like a Japanese, like a, like one little symbol on his like right forearm, like almost like under his forearm. And I remember seeing the picture he took was kind of at a distance, but you could see like that there was a black mark there that, that was probably a tattoo. It was close enough to where I, I looked at his face. I said, that's got to be him. I mean, it's got to be the same guy. It's baffling to me. I've always wondered about that. And and did I know someone who didn't age? Did I know an immortal? Did I know this guy? His or, hair looked exactly the same. He looked like he was, you know, like he hadn't aged a day. Our friend Serge was, was 100% positive that this was the same guy. And, he, and even he said he had the same name, which he had not changed his name. Now, when I questioned Adam later on, after me and Sergio and everybody had had the whole discussion, and he just kept saying, well, it's not me, dude. That's a different guy. And Sergio was like, I got pictures of us together, dude. And so Adam Adam was very adamant that, that – Adam was very adamant. Adam was very adamant that that was not him. But he did tell me that he had worked uh, downtown a few years before, and he had actually worked at my brother's club for a while, a club called Proteus. is no longer there. And he remembered my brother and a few other people. And my brother said he had worked with him and it was about 10 years before that. But he said that he had left after that and that when he worked there 10 years before, my brother said that he looked like this. He looked very like the same. He had not aged. Of course, 10 years, you, you can look close to the same. Yeah. But 20 years, come on, dude. When you start getting into your mid 40s, you start to get gray. You start to look a little different. Wait, there was so no, no uh, wrinkles. Nothing. I mean, the guy looked young. He looked like he was in between, you know, 27 to 30 years old. If he told you he was 26 and he worked with, you know, D 10 years earlier, he was mm -hmm. 16 at the time. Yeah. He told D that. That's why we thought he was lying. So that means that he was probably, what I thought was he was probably closer to 29, 30. Okay. Because he was, he would have been 18. Yeah. Because D said that he, look the same, but he was claiming back then that he was like, you know, in his early twenties, but that's not unusual. People will lie all the time downtown to, to, to get a, uh, a bouncer job. Guys will lie about their age. They'll falsify documents just to be down there. To I, I knew a lot of teenagers that would try to get jobs and I'd be like, no, you can't work for us. 
and you'd have to make them show you an ID. And sometimes people were stupid enough to bring fake IDs to try to get a job, which you're going like, hey, you know, it's our it's our job to sniff out fake IDs, you know, for a living. You know what I mean? <laughs> so they would come and try to be like, yeah, man, look, I'm 19. And they're like 16, 17. That wasn't unusual. That happened at least once a month. But uh, um, this this guy, it was just bizarre. It was very bizarre. No, you know, no one really knew what to make of it. But like I said, the, the memory just kind of faded. And then a few years later, I was at uh, Squid's Club. Now, I did ask my friend Arash about it later on when I was over at his bar. And a guy that works for him that had been working for him for a long time remembers the guy. And he said the same thing, that uh, he he thought that the guy was was uh, was odd, that he had all the skills he had, that he knew all the information he knew. He knew history, and I got along with him very well because of that. We talked a lot of, you know, World War One, World War Two. I mean, he knew a lot about history. He was a Civil War buff. He knew a lot about the Civil War. Just just a wealth of knowledge, this guy. You know, and I sat there in his apartment with him and and, and a couple of other guys, that, you know, and drank with him. He had a, a very nice collection of uh, artifacts that were very, it inspired me to, as you can see, you look around the studio. I have a ton of, of artifacts um, that I've collected over the years. And he kind of inspired me to do that. He had a couple of antique pistols that were from the Revolutionary War era. Some Civil War pistols, which I also have now too, but it was just odd. You know, it was a very, it was a very strange, um, it was a very strange guy. And once I, I don't want to say he was weird, odd, or, or strange to the point of like I thought something was up until Sergio came and was like, I worked with this guy twenty years ago. You know, he was just, you know, he was obviously you said a very nice guy, and mm -hmm. from what I can tell, hardworking because you know. You don't apply and get all those skills unless unless you're a good yeah a good worker. But claimed that he had lived in Seattle, he had lived in San at San Antonio, he had lived in San Francisco and Denver, so he had lived all over the place. Claimed that he had lived in in uh, Boston, that he had lived in Philadelphia, so he moved around a lot. He had been in a lot of different places. So you know, I thought that's weird. He claimed that he worked on a cruise ship for a long time, and that's why he had visited all these other foreign places he knew about. Because I've been overseas a few times, and he had was we, we had talked about different places, and he knew he had been to Africa, obviously. Some strange, just just strange things about him. Uh, so that's that story, folks. And and I don't know what to make of it. I I just thought I'd throw it out there. I've been sitting on that one for years and years. So the next story I'm going to tell you. Th this is interesting because the the lady that told me this story, she was living. She met this guy in in Saint Augustine, Florida, because that's where her Younger sister lived, and she had gone through a divorce, so she moved from Ohio down to to Florida to live in a horrible place. I'm just kidding, in Florida, <laughs> to live in St. Augustine, Florida. And the, the, the whole state is not miserable, but I wouldn't want to live in St. Augustine. St. Augustine is interesting because it is the oldest uh, establishment, I guess, established city. Found, I guess, what is it? The oldest. Founded city. Founded city. I don't yeah. know how you would say it. 1565. Yeah, that's when it was first set up. If that's correct. Anthony, is that correct? Can you look it up for me real quick and tell me if I'm correct or not? I don't want to give out false information. But uh, I believe 1565, St. Augustine was founded by the Spanish. And <clears throat> the oldest continuous. continuously established. Okay, hu human story. Right, okay. Yeah. So St. Augustine, Florida. So this is interesting because Ponce de Leon was in Florida looking for the Fountain of Youth. And we'll get to that later. That that's another interesting tie in here. This woman, okay, and we were just talking about a cruise ship that Adam worked on, another synchronicity. She met this guy in St. Augustine, Florida. They went on a cruise together. It was a whirlwind courtship. She met this guy. He was a very attractive man. Um, they met on a cruise ship, I believe. And they eventually got married on a cruise ship. So she met this guy. He was very charming, very handsome. He looked to be about 10 years younger than her when they met. She was in her late 30s, and he looked to be in his late 20s. He was blonde hair, blue eyed, same thing, but he had sandy blonde hair, and that he was very attractive. And uh, she said he was charming, six foot three, just striking guy. Claimed that he had made his his money in the oil business, offshore drilling, all this other stuff, these big words and names and stuff that she didn't know anything about. And she was so smitten with him that she knew something was off, that he would take off and be gone for like 
a week at a time, you know, going all the time, traveling to Europe, traveling to Argentina, all these different places. And she didn't want to question it because she was so in love with him. But she thought maybe he's seeing other women. She always suspected of that. At this point in time in her life, she's almost 80. But she she actually looks very young for her age. I mean, she doesn't she doesn't look immortal, but no offense, ma'am. I'm not saying <laughs> you still look very good for your age, but but he obviously has not aged. Okay. This is what's weird. Okay. She said that that he looked like he was about 10 years younger. Several years went by. Everything was fine. They had moved to a small town in Florida. He would take off periodically to go do whatever it was that he was doing, and he would come back to her. Now, that in and of itself is not like like just totally weird or anything, but she said that eventually he would stay gone longer and longer, and that eventually one day he took off just to go pick up some takeout food, okay, if you can believe that, and never came back. Time passed. She, he had moved a large sum of money into her bank account, and the rest of, of all the money from his accounts was gone. Now, she knows that. She hired a private investigator. He had left a safe. She got into the safe, and there were a few p- pieces of identification of different people's names. Old IDs, too. His uh, IDs? Yeah, 20, 30 years before. Hmm. Like, going back to, like, the 40s and 50s. And, uh, of course, this was in the late 70s, or, or mid-70s, I should say. So, if you, if, you, if you think about it, the mid-70s and his IDs going back to the 50s, he would have been, like, a 10-year-old kid. But he looked the same. He had an ID from like 1952. He had an old passport from whatever. I mean, you know, whatever, a bunch of weird stuff, you know. She couldn't find anyone that worked at these companies that he claimed that he was a part of, whatever, by the name that he was giving her. And so the private investigator she hired could could only go so far, could only take it so far, and he dropped off the map. She never stopped loving him. She always thought that maybe something had happened to him as a missing person or something but it was weird that he had taken, like, her sister kept trying to convince her he's not a missing person. There was nothing, you know, he he left you. Yeah, he you the money wouldn't be gone. Yeah, the money. Accounts. And then he put money in your account and left. And, and so she had to come to terms with that. She had to come to terms with reality. Maybe he didn't love me, you know. And uh, he had different names, you know, like Charles. And and, Cl- and another one was like uh, uh, Jonathan. And he had a name. His last name was Clark. And another name was, was Walden. And there was all these different names and stuff. And <clears throat> so she said that she knew in her heart that he he loved her. So something pressing had to have happened to make him go away. So fast forward about 20 years. She said it was in the, in the, in the, uh, the mid-90s. She never stopped looking for him. She eventually got a hit. She found uh, a person by, the, by that name, fitting that description, who was living in Minneapolis, Minnesota, by, by one, of, one of the names, because she had hired a private investigator. And this guy was very thorough. And he had found a guy by that, you know, and gave her a phone number. She got the courage up and she called him. Now, she said this was a very open, frank, honest conversation. She said that he answered the phone and she, she gave him the name. And he immediately knew who it was. And he was like, he said her name. Now, I'm not going to say her name because she doesn't want people thinking she's crazy. But this is, it was a very touching story. And he says, I, I will call her Elizabeth. It's very close to her name. He says Liz. Because it was very short. It was just short for little Elizabeth. Nickname, Elizabeth. Yeah. yeah. Little pet name. There was a little pet name he called. He, he Liz Honey. You know, but that's not what it was. It was close to it. And he's like, Liz Honey, I know who this is. And he goes, I'm sorry. And she's like, why did you do this to me? Why did you leave me? Was there someone else? And he goes, at that time, no, there was not. He's like, but the time was going to come when, you know, you were going to figure out that things were not correct. And she asked him, what do you mean by things are not correct? He's like, you, you won't, we wouldn't understand. So they began to correspond and eventually he agreed to meet her. And she flew up there and they met. And he was on a business trip to another city and they, she flew, he flew her up to this other city and they met and she was like, it was so weird. 20 years had gone by. He hadn't aged a day. She's in her like what? Fifties. Close to yeah, 60. At, at that point, point she was about 50. Okay. Or she was uh 60, I believe. Yeah. She would be close to 60. So I believe that's correct. Yeah. She'd be close yeah, to 20 60. years. Yeah, I think yeah, so. 20 years. Yeah. Trying to do the math in my head here. <clears throat> so, 
he had an age today and he told her a really, really strange story. Now, now listen to this. He told her that he didn't age and that as best he can remember, he woke up in a field in the Netherlands. He spoke Dutch, had no recollection other than a, a strange memory that he thought almost could have been a dream of when he was a child, about 12 or 13, working at, at a tulip farm. And eventually he went to sleep and he woke up like, you know, it's like he was asleep and he woke up and that was it. He was in a field, uh, had no recollection of who, who he was, could speak two or three languages, was about 30 years old, as best he could tell. He got a job working on a boat. He knew a lot about nautical this and that, you know, I don't know what the terms are for that. She, she told me it was like nautical, whatever. He knew a lot about aeronautics too. Like he knew a lot about planes. He was an airplane mechanic at one time, kind of like our friend Adam. He had a lot of different things, jobs that he had done. He had gotten a degree under one of the names and it was an actual degree. She looked it up under this college that he had gone to. It was, it was him and the photos that she had found of him. He had not aged at all. She found photos going all the way back to the 20s and 30s of, of what she thinks was him. Not 100%. She wasn't 100% of these pictures. And when, when this first started coming out through the, the work that she had done, she didn't want to believe it. And so eventually <clears throat> she presented him with the pictures and he says, I'm going to have to take these from you. I, you can't keep these. She hadn't even thought to try to like make copies and back them up or whatever because she didn't really know. She just took them up there. She was so excited to see him and she confronted him with the evidence and he was like, I, I can't let you take these. He he paid her for them and she said, that's fine, you know, whatever. He's like, I, I'm not a normal human being. And she's like, well, who really is, you know? But he, he told her, look, no, you don't understand. He's like, the year that I woke up in the field was in the 1730s. It was 1731 and that I, he woke up in this field and that he wa walked to, to a, a boat dock, got a job and started working on a boat, told her this fantastical story about how he had traveled around the world working on boats and ships and stuff. And, and, uh, yeah, it was just a very strange story. Um, said he really had no memories prior to that. Now she asked him, she says, so you're immortal. And he says, well, I don't know if I would call it that, but I don't die. He's like, I don't age. He was a, he was a chain smoker. He smoked. His skin did not appear to have that smoker skin. He didn't have a raspy voice. He had not aged. Um, he could pretty much eat whatever he wanted. It didn't affect him. Did he get uh, ill? She said he had never got sick. According to him, he would never be, he had been sick ever. So he was like immune to anything and everything. And then it was, it was so bizarre that he had all these, you know, like he knew so much about like all these different wars and different times periods. He had all this information about what it was like during the great depression and all these other events, World War I, World War II. Uh, he had served in the military in World War I and World War II, which was weird, you know, and he used different names according to him. He had been wounded once and he felt like he was going to die, but he didn't. She asked him if he got shot. If you got shot, would you die? He was like, I don't know. I've never been shot enough to die. Enough? I, li so I lived. Yeah, yeah, he lived. Geez. He lived. Uh, she's, he said that he thought he was almost, he almost drowned one time, but he was rescued. And, and so he believed that if something happened to him, like if he, if somebody shot him in the head, he would probably die. He just didn't age. So he's not a, like a mortal in the sense of not 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 what he thought of, thought of as immortal. He didn't believe that. Yeah. He never tried to stab himself or do anything like that. She said she had a lot of questions for him, you know. She kept up a, a friendship with him over the years, and they would meet up periodically, but he stayed young. And as she aged, he didn't. And the last that she to to told me of him were pictures that she had of him on Facebook. When Facebook became a thing, her sister was like, you should try to find him on Facebook because she had gone on like another, I guess, decade where she didn't talk to him. And he didn't communicate with her, and she don't know where he went. So she made a Facebook account. She tried to find him under all these different names that she knew of of his. No hits, nothing. Eventually, he contacted her through Facebook. And she started getting, you know, striking up a, 
a conversation with him one day. She just got a message and that was it. And then they started talking again and he was like living in Australia. And she said that, you know, he went dark again and then eventually he appeared again in like Argentina. And like he started talking to her again under a different name, but it was the same guy, same pictures, whatever. Now, when she first told me this story, I did go and and look up one of his Facebook accounts that was there. I did try to message the guy. I, maybe I shouldn't have, but I tried to message him to see Facebook account was deactivated. So after I tried messaging him, it was deactivated. The pictures I saw of him were like there were some pictures of him skydiving and some other stuff. It just looked like a normal guy in his late 20s. He looked uh, young. She has aged, I guess, and he hasn't. And so, I, you know, I, I've thought about this case a lot. And th that's why I wanted to get the rest of the information before I brought it out and said, hey, that's why I kept saying we're going to talk about the immortals. But I wanted to get the rest of the story from from Liz to to, to throw it out there and, and be able to tell the whole story because I wanted to do it justice. Now, there actually wasn't a whole lot to the rest of the story, but I wanted to make sure that I got every piece of it. Do you have any questions, Tony? Mm, not uh, well. In this case, I have a little couple things that we could discuss. But uh, for, one of the first things, just real quick, when we say immortal, do we mean like impenetrable to everything? What is immortal, dude? Exactly. I don't even know like, what that do is. We mean, like, like, do, we, do we? Is it a vampire, vampire sense where like, oh, not only do I not die, but he I can't food. get hurt? Well, what I know about him is she said he ate food like everyone else. He just didn't die. What I was thinking, like maybe a walk in. Like maybe, yeah, a, like a, a uh, yeah. I understand what you're saying. Your stepdad claims to be a walk. -in. That's what I was thinking. The same thing. See, Tony's de stepdad. When T you tell the story of your stepdad, well, I was gonna say real quick uh, before, like when you mentioned that he couldn't remember things before his uh his when he woke up, it reminded me of my stepdad who had a similar situation when he was very young. He got into a very unfortunate car, uh, vehicle accident where he was in. One of those An unfortunate trucks. vehicle accident. There are no fortunate vehicle accidents. Yeah, you could stop someone from harming another. Isn't that a fortunate? That's a fortunate accident? <laughs> yeah, because you save someone's life. In an accident? What are you talking about? How well, do you have an accident? someone was about to hit another person. Okay, anyways, we're, getting, okay, yeah, we're going off we're track. We're going off tracker. I'm sorry. Because you had to interrupt me. Well, I was trying Jeez. to make a joke, but you didn't just let it flow. You yeah, because I'm not going to. You can't. Or the jibber jibber. I'm going to stand up for myself now. It's a different Mushu, all right? Oh, my gosh. No, anyway, tell anyway, the story. Anyway, uh, yeah, he was in the bed of a truck but it's one of those trucks with um, a camper a camper yeah mm -hmm. and he was like laying on top of it or whatever or no, he was laying in, in a, a little bunk bed in it in it yeah and he uh, the truck hit another vehicle and he ended up just shooting out of that the the back of it and going and just like rolling and like just apparently according to him he was so badly injured that when he woke up he had to get a blood transfusion or whatever and he he woke up um, that he just rem he couldn't remember anything from before. Like it was like he just it was like a blank slate for him. He remembered just a little bit before the accident. I remember him saying it was like he remembered being in the the the, the truck, but before that, it was like he was having a tough time remembering. He don't remember anything, anything before. Yeah, it. Uh, yeah, yeah. And all he remembers is like like after afterwards. Yeah, it exactly. Was like five exact same old, situation where he just and his eye color and hair color changed supposedly. Yeah, he well, I mean, I've seen the pictures. He, they definitely did change. Yeah, okay, so that that's true. Um, yeah, me too. So I mean, but like sometimes hair color can change a little bit on the kid, but that it was weird. Like no, he, it was he like looked a drastic he, he looked change. different. He did. Yeah, he looked like two different people. Now I, I'm good friends with with his mom. You know, and and Darl, his mother, has told me she's like, well, what the heck happened to my son if you're not my son? And he's like, you know, he believes that he was a walk in. Folks, that's what a walk-in is. Someone dies and another soul takes their body, supposedly. That's how that works. And I'm not saying that I believe that 100%. You know, I'm just saying that that's what that is. what that is. That's yeah, what that's a walk-in is that's considered. That's what phrase means. Yeah, and it's very bizarre, but but maybe this guy was a walk-in, but how do you explain the immor immor immortality, like him never getting old? Um, if I had to take a guess, and this is just like a guess, I would just say maybe... Maybe on the verge, like maybe like, you know, whatever happened to this unfortunate uh, man in this field where he woke up, like he was on the verge of death. And right before he was able to like, you know, uh, like this 
other soul like took over, something happened in between that. Maybe the other the first soul didn't leave soon enough, or either the the first soul left too soon, and that when he entered it, it was basically just like a, a corpse, but was still able to be you know animated animated so basically he's just walking around like oh, a soul man. and a dead body because you, you can imagine the soul and like you, what you would need to eat though you wouldn't need to mm-hmm. eat like so that that kind of but he did that. eat according to her yeah he did eat but she, it was more for like enjoyment oh then yeah I mean, I, yeah and she said that he didn't need to eat but but he did eat but he would he would eat yeah never so, gained weight according to him he always stayed the same I mean, never, never gained weight more than like, you know, within, within a certain r- range of weight. Cause I asked those questions, was very active, had lots of energy. He slept four hours a day. That was it. She, she, even when he was with her, he did that slept four hours a day. He was, you know, strong. She was, he was like a strong man, you know, but he wasn't like overly powerful. Like um, superhuman. Strength. He was very nice. You mm-hmm. know, she described him as angelic. Maybe that's just because she loved him, but she was like, he was like an angel on earth. He was the sweetest guy. He would do anything for anybody. But love is blind. Maybe he was just a really, really horrible person and she just loved him. I'm just kidding. I'm just Wait, kidding. He really He's probably not. She, I believe her. She said he was a nice guy. And yeah, probably I mean, if was. he was, that's a credit to him because can you imagine living for 300 years by yourself, watching everyone you know and everyone you eventually meet just die? Die. It's going to take a toll on you. So if you're able to reta- retain your sanity, and uh, um, your you know humanity and able to look at people and like actually form connections again, because you see that all the time uh, in vampire movies or in something else about how like uh, like they they eventually just start losing themselves to the point basically like cruelty you know the the point of where like they just start stop viewing humans as humans. And Isn't more that like, like Dorian Gray, Oscar Wilde, the the book? Oh yeah, the portrait of the Dorian, portrait, Gray, yeah, Dor- yeah. Dorian Gray. Yeah. I believe the premise has been a long time since I've read part of it, but the premise was that he, the picture aged and he didn't, and he was like a libertine. He pursued all these like, um, hedonistic whatever. And then eventually the picture began to age. And then eventually he got, I don't remember how it all went down, but yeah, he, and then he, he began to become callous and, and just, you know, not care about anything. He lived too long or whatever. Yeah. That, that, that's the whole, yeah. You know, I mean, I mean, basically, I mean, too much of a good thing eventually makes it bad. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's only so much you can enjoy something before it ends up becoming boredom. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I can't imagine living human life. One of the best, well, not not best things. I don't want to say it like that, but one of the things that we have ensured to us as human beings is that we will eventually die. So, all of our experiences, we have to make sure to you know we appreciate them because you know it could end at any moment. So, without that. In your mindset, I can't imagine going through life because you know, like, oh, it doesn't matter. Like, what? Why does anything matter if nothing I do really has an effect on myself? Because I, I believe humans are selfish in nature. So, like him, he would see all that and he would be like, oh, why would I care about anything? Because it's not going to affect me. You know, because nothing can affect but me. He because, must have really loved her. Yeah, he had to have loved her because he, you know, not only did he knowingly know that he can't be with her, but he still made sure that even when he left, he took care of her. She was very beautiful when she was young. I mean, not that she's not pretty now, but I'm saying she's, I mean, she's almost 80 and yeah, she's she, an older woman. So, and she's not, you know, she's not out there in the dating scene trying to, <laughs> she's not taking selfies and whatever. She didn't Did seem she, like a very self-absorbed person. Did she ever get remarried or anything? Or uh, she, No. No, oh, so she was. No, she did not. No, she and she loved this guy too. for him and it was him and that was it. And of course he moved on with his life, which is to be an immortal. I mean, I have heard sure. theories that there are supposedly several immortals at any one time. Um, well, um, go I, ahead and talk about what you were going to talk about. I was just based off what you said right there because I read this. Um, it was basically like a comic book, you know. It's a Japanese one or the Korean wow. one. Okay, I thought it was going to be something. No, but it's the same thing. What you basically just said was that it's a story one about Punch Man. No, it's like Gilgamesh. It was the guy's name was Gilgamesh. It wasn't based on. No, I was going to say the epic of creation, but never mind. No, no, it wasn't like that. Silly again. No, but he was basically just an immortal who lived on Earth since the creation, right? Mm. So he experienced everything. He just grew dull to everything, and in the last moments, like at the, the very end of the book and the start of the next one, it goes that he eventually passed on his, his powers to someone else, or passed on his eternalness to someone else, so that he could eventually die. And like, what if it was like that? To where like he woke up in the field 
um, because you know, someone passed on their that body. Yeah, maybe not that body, but just that. Who you knows? It might just be like an ability or. A, but how come he didn't have any recollections prior to that? He claimed that he came over here after the the Revolutionary War. Maybe. I mean, it's an epic story, yeah, you know, I mean, if, yeah, if nothing else. And she didn't strike me as being like somebody who just liked to tell fanciful stories. An 80-year-old woman, why would she? Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, this, I would like to know his story from the beginning. You know, like that would be so interesting to find out how he mm-hmm. knew that he couldn't age. Well, I tried and it didn't work. Yeah, I mean, obviously, but uh, I doubt he's willing to come out about it. And he deactivated the account. So I, I'm just going to continue stalking until I find the guy mm-hmm. and uh, capture him and, and force him to tell us the story. Can you imagine nowadays? That must be so scary because, especially <laughs> for an immortal, because everybody <clears throat> knows everything. It's, uh, it's online. Everything's online nowadays. Anyone can find you. No, nah, but you can still move around, though. You can still move around. It might even be easier to move around, too, in ways that you can, like, find different ways to... But it would be easier to find you. It'd too. be easier to find you. Yeah. I mean, information is everywhere. So I mean, a picture mm-hmm. could show up somewhere, and then another picture show. And if you, and, and over the you would, acc- of course, if you're immortal, you would accrue an amazing amount of wealth, of knowledge, and and of course, money. Well, money, yeah. I mean, and then you could you could always get surgery and keep changing and whatever. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> you could do that, I guess. One day you go outside and your face melts off, and everybody's scared of you because you look like Red Skull. Yeah, that's I, what we need to do. Just in ten years, look for a guy that looks like Red Skull. No. Okay, we'll find him. Well, how do you know in 10 years we're not all looking like Red Skull? How do you know that's not the fashion, all right? <laughs> no nose. No nose. I'll tell, and... tell you what, folks. You you come up to your own conclusion of this. We, we're going to move on here. Uh, what I was going to say about the Fountain of Youth was that Ponce de Leon, he looked for the Fountain of Youth, and the, many of the Caribbean islanders where Ponce de Leon, the explorer, went, claimed that it was in Bimini, which is off the coast. Uh, it's in the Caribbean, whatever. And uh, Bimini Road, of course, the the Bimini Road that that, that they claim is it was a sunken city. A lot of people say Atlantis because of the the weird uh, stones that they found. It was like an underground city uh, underwater, and the Fountain of Youth supposedly was in Bimini. Or and, and so, but Ponce de Leon looked for it in Florida, and I thought that was an interesting uh, kind of weird thing that tie in order the tie into the Fountain of Youth, and yeah. then he was in Saint Augustine, Florida. Maybe he found the Fountain of Youth, and he was drinking from it. Who knows? Mm-hmm. And then he just told her a bunch of stuff. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it was. But there's that story. And now, Tony, you want to talk about Count St. Germain? Well, I figured if we're going to do a story about immortals, we have to do about- The most famous one. one of the most famous ones, yeah. It's Count St. Germain, who lived an insane life, even in you know the time period that of a normal lifespan at that time. was like The amount of stuff that he did was just uh, crazy. I mean, from- I guess we could start at the beginning, which would have to be supposedly he was born in 1960. They don't really know if this is 1960. Was no, I mean, uh, ni- 1690, 1690, yeah. Switch, yeah, 1690 in Transylvania. Uh, I, they say that he was the son of Prince Francis II in Transylvania. Mm-hmm. It's not like conformed, confirmed or anything because I mean, he was no, illegitimate. Yeah. Well, no one really knew anything about him. Like no one really knew. If well, this, I, know, I know that he was around a lot of royal courts. Oh yeah. And he, out of royal courts. He was like all over in court. I mean, he, he basically spent a bunch of time in the European high society in the mid 1970s. Um, you know, Prince Charles considered him one of the greatest philosophers of the, to, who have ever lived. He spent time in, you know, uh, King Louis of, of France. He spent time with him becoming a, like, he performed secret missions for him in England. But he did the same thing in 1960 in, uh, at the, the Hague, the Hague or whatever. The Hague, yeah. The Hague. He did the same thing. And um, he, he, he basically just spent a lot of time just going around doing stuff for everyone. But what's weird is that in 19, or 1760 in Paris, uh, Countess von uh, Georgi, Gre- uh, Gregory, Gre- Gregor, yeah. Gre- Gre- Gregory, heard that Count Saint Germain had a, arrived at a soiree at, at her uh, at, at a, a home, and uh, she was like, "Oh, that's weird. I remember a Count Saint Germain in 1710." Uh, like she that's rem- weird. You said the Hague, and that's in the Netherlands. The, oh, is it? Yes. Oh. I mean, and then we were talking about this other guy. So I mean, it's just weird. Yeah, but I mean, basically, he he she was you know very she was elderly at the time this uh, countess, and uh, she met the new the, the this Saint Germain. And she was like, "Well, you look exactly the same. This is the, obviously the man that I met you know forty years earlier in seventeen ten." And she was just like, "Oh yeah, I mean that was me." 
Like he explained it in yeah, detail. He was very frank about it. Yeah, he, 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 he was into alchemy. Well, she asked him. She asked him if he like, oh, is that your father? Or is like, is that like you know your uh, someone that you know, a relative? And she was like, no, no, that was me. And he explained in detail their meeting. So she was like, oh, this has to be him. How many years was ago apart was that? Uh, well, she met him in 1760. Mm-hmm. She, uh, or uh, she met him later on in 1760. They mer- first met in 1710. So, so 50 years. 50 and, years. And he hadn't aged. She was an older woman and he was still, he looked the same. I, I remember reading something about a remote viewer that like a group of, like there was a remote viewers and, and psychics that had gotten together to try to solve the riddle of St. Germain. And uh, this was like several years ago and I read about it in some, something, some article and I can't remember what it was. But uh, that they had they had rem- remote viewed him, and that at that moment in time when they remote viewed him, he was living in Toronto, Canada, and that Saint Germain was still alive, and still walking the earth, and that he was just that he was a very sad and sullen person because he couldn't die. The, the life he lived, I'm sure that you know, eventually you just get tired of it. Like I said earlier, um, the crazy thing, another crazy thing he did was in 1774, he went back to France, and when uh, Louis. Uh, uh, and Marie Antoinette uh, was, were on the throne mm-hmm. and it supposedly he warned them of the revolution that was going to come in 15 years that would kill or that would uh, oh so he had information from the future or he just knew something I mean who knows this guy lived forever uh, according to this so he might have just seen a pattern or seen something you know I mean with that like you said earlier with that amount of uh, experience the wealth of knowledge that you would obtain who knows what he could uh, piece together? I mean, he he's a uh, he was a very famous alchemist. Like that, mm-hmm. that was something oh, that he yeah. was claiming. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. What is it called when you have uh, when you're not? I'm over here staggering. What is that called? I'm trying to figure out. Not what you're intuition, saying. but when you have uh, basically you can see into the future. Kind yeah, of. but but it's not because you you have any special powers. It's because you're very intuitive. But the the words a word for it. Oh, I, I know what you're saying. You have Basically, a lot of like, perception. You, you have a lot yeah. of perception, and you're very astute. I can't remember the word. What is the word, Anthony Zane? Nobody knows. Basically, it's a word like you can piece together. Can tell me what that is. Piece together everything. Yeah, you can figure out like trends and things just because you're very. Um, I don't know what the clever. Word. There, there's I mean, a word for it. it. Hopefully, the, the the listeners will be able to tell me. Yeah, but anyways, <laughs> that that sounds like what he was. Yeah, I mean, in 1785, the uh, re- official records of the Freemason Freemasonry show show that they he represented them uh, in their uh, at a convention in 1785. Yep. So he was still alive. And it's still alive. And then after taking the Bastille in the French Revolution in 1789, uh, she said the Comites. I, I can't say this name, but uh, De Adhemiar said that she had a lengthy conversation with him. And the, you know the records just keep going all the way up till because he because he was around a lot of famous people. Oh, he, a lot he of, loved yeah. famous people. I he, mean, he stayed in the limelight, you know. Oh yeah, he he, he it was like his favorite thing. What was the last appearance of this guy? Like, um, just keep going on the timeline. You know? Well, I guess another one is eighteen twenty one. They say that he might have taken another identity. Uh, Albert Vandom wrote of meeting a man who bore a striking resemblance to Count Saint Germain, but went by the name of Major Fraser. And then the most recent appearance of the man was in 1972 in Paris when a man named Richard Chanfray announced that he was a legend, the legendary count. And then he went on French television to turn lead into gold, but uh, he later committed suicide in 1983. So I don't know about how, how, if that was correct or if that was actually him or not, but he did claim it to be him. And if, you know, that one actually wasn't him and he was just saying it, then I guess the latest one would have to be in 1897, um, a famous French singer. I guess he loved going to France for some reason. Well, yeah. I mean, he liked to live. France was the the hub of culture in Mm -hmm. Europe at one time. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, the throne of the Sun King, you know. I yeah, mean, he was always around that, there. That was why France was the great prize, even up until the point of, the, you know, World War II. It was still the great prize. I mean. Well, this uh, famous this, the, the singer, Emma Calvé, d- dedicated a, uh autographed portrait of herself to Saint Germain. So, I mean, that would be the l- latest one if this last one isn't wasn't actually him. Freaky. Interesting stuff. Yeah, I mean, he this guy just lived a lifetime. An enigmatic figure, I guess you would say. Yeah, I mean, he just was all over the place, and he just couldn't seem to 
keep himself away from high society. I mean, he loved to be around famous people, and he loved he he would claim uh, when people would ask him about his identity, he would say, "Oh, I live five hundred. I was born five hundred years ago." He would always say that. He was always saying like, "Oh, I'm you know I, I lived five hundred years ago," and he actually one uh which wasn't that bizarre at the time in the 19, uh, I mean, 17, uh, was that he actually had a bunch of different names. He, he changed his, he had like a bunch of different titles mm. and, you know, which wasn't like crazy. It wasn't like a, a unheard of thing to do, but it would be an easy way to, you know, mask your identity a little be like, Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm this, I'm this, I'm, my name's this, my name is this. And he would just change it from time to time so that, you know, cause he was obviously very, you know, skeptical or not, not skeptical. How do you say this? He was very guarded about telling where he was actually from. And I think that has to do with his, you know, his immortality probably. I mean, mm -hmm. if he, you know, if he wasn't born in Transylvania in 1960 and he was actually born at a different time and it was just a saying that so that he could, you know, just pose as that. But it's just like, I, I was reading about this guy and I was just thinking like, dude, this, this guy has performed more in his life than most people do in, you know, a regular lifetime. And this guy was just all over the place doing stuff for everybody. He didn't, he, he was just so well traveled and so like upfront about him being uh, alive for yeah, 500 years. He was years. just very honest about and it. He didn't, he, it was like, he didn't care about he it. He did more than most people do in 10 lifetimes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Very impressive. Well, very impressive. folks, that is, that is our show about immortals and we get more information. We're still working on another uh, possible story that we got um, since we've mentioned it a few times. I've been throwing it out there over and over again to get people to send the information that there's more about this. You know, I know that uh, there's a lot of legends and stories about families in New Orleans that live long lives. But according to a lot of people, they are vampires. Is that, I, is that correct, Zane? Are there vampires in New Orleans? He said, yeah, if you didn't. Yeah, he says, yeah. My, yeah. my nephew just walked in the studio. Um, he's looking for peanut butter, like always. We said New Orleans but, and vampires, and he I'm just up kidding. Like, you oh. don't just eat peanut butter and chicken nuggets anymore. Oh, what is it? Chocolate chocolate and chicken nuggets. He doesn't do it. He doesn't. He, I thought he used to. Oh, yeah. He was, did you ever eat peanut butter with him, or was it just chocolate? Just chocolate. <laughs> when he was a kid, folks, he only wanted to eat chicken tenders and fries or chicken nuggets and fries. And if he took a break from that, it was to eat peanut butter and jelly. But uh, then he began to, to experiment with chocolate and chicken chicken nuggets. <laughs> uh, hey, Count Saint Germain had philosophy and all kinds of other crazy stuff, and you had chicken nuggets and 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 chocolate. All right, guys, we're gonna be we're gonna we're gonna end this. Uh, this is it for the show, and uh, we we hope you like and subscribe, like we said on YouTube. And um, everybody, tune in next week and uh, next Friday. Every Friday we release a show, and never know we might surprise you with one in between. Who knows? But uh, oh, for all of us here at the PRT team, well, I was going to say real quick. Just remember um, to look on the Facebook group for our giveaway. Yes, Facebook yeah. group for the giveaway. Make sure you go and you uh, make a comment on the Paranormal Roundtable page or the uh, group on the group as we post the uh, show. And uh, make a comment, and you will be picked at random, possibly to win an autographed book from Lena Godfrey. And a shirt. Uh, we're giving away a shirt, too. Are did we? Not, did uh, not know that. I thought it was I, just a I, book. That was my mistake. Then. Now I'm you're sorry. giving away a shirt. Jeez. Why don't we just give away the dogs while we're at it? I'm huh? get rid of one of the dogs. Get the, give away the picture we got of Dorian Gray. <laughs> all right, folks. That's all the time we have for tonight. It's a great show. We had fun making this one. It was very interesting, and I'm glad we were able to get it out to you. And uh, you guys have a good night.